Hello, welcome to Code and Box Automation Lab. This is Sherful. In this lecture, we're going to learn test matrix. We'll see what is test matrix, why do you need test matrix, and the type of test matrix. So, what is test matrix? So, software test matrix are parameters to measure your testing process and product quality. Because we know this, uh, you know, uh, testing play a very important significant role in software development so you know the process you're applying to test your your software your quality process is that a good or bad and at the at the end you're delivering uh, your product are also good or bad you know to define to measure those things you know we need a test metrics so then why do we need test metrics as I already explained you because you want to ensure the testing process you are following are good enough to test your application or you need to update your process you need to change your process you know and also you want to define the delivery deliverable product our quality as per your your commitment you know as per it's supposed to so how you're going to measure those things how we're going to define this that's why we need the test metrics test metrics will help us to define those things it will help us to give us this two answer so type of test metrics then are classified process metrics and product metrics since it's how this metrics help you to find your process and also help you to define your product that's why it's the main two uh, classified of test metrics are process metrics and pro uh, product metrics and every metrics like process metrics will have list of metrics and similarly product metrics will have list of metrics let's see the process metrics so the process metrics are used in the process of test preparation and test execution phase of software test life cycle so the metrics are there is a number of metrics you know it falls under the process metrics we'll see one by one first one it's like test case preparation productivity it's test case preparation productivity used to calculate the number of test cases prepared and the effort spent it's the formula the total number of test cases divided by total uh, effort uh, spent in hour if we say example like 240 it's if your total case number for any project or maybe it's uh, for any specific release divided by your spend hour is 20 so equals to 12 test cases per hour so it will give you find out that you know the effort that how many test cases you can create per hour that's the 12 okay so next is the test design coverage which is very very important parameter or a matrix so it helps to measure the percentage of test case coverage against the number of requirement or stories the formula the total number of test cases mapped to requirement divided by total number of requirement into hundreds so it means you know your total you have to you, you already know that how many test cases you have been created you know which is mapped against your total requirement so example you you created total uh, test cases 98 against of 100 test cases so that time your test coverage would be 98 by 100 into 100 uh, uh, that equals to 98 percent so your test coverage would be 98 percent it's a very important uh, uh, test matrix and next it's test execution coverage so after you uh, you you know that you test a uh, uh, design coverage so now it's time to know this test execution coverage so it helps to measure the number of test cases executed against the number of test cases planned so sometimes you know you uh, you you are not able to execute all the test cases for a different reason it could be blocked you don't have enough uh, testing data your environment was uh, not settled so many reason so this test execution coverage will give us the answer like you know what was that you know test execution coverage rate so that time it will, you know, the formula is total number of test case executed divided by total number of test case planned into 100 so example here our total number of test cases executed 240 and then our plan was 280 so our 
you know total test execution coverage 86 percent next test case pass rate so after you executed the test cases now it's time to know your pass rate so it helps to measure the percentage of test case passed formula total number of test case passed divided by total number of test case executed into 100 example over here your total number of test cases assume that is uh, uh, 80 and uh, your test cases was executed was 90 so to total pass was 80 and execution was 90 so your 89 percent is your pass rate next is a fail rate beside the pass rate it's also you you have to know your fail rate so it helps to measure the percentage of your you know test case failed the ratio the formula is total number of test cases failed by total number of test cases exec executed into 100 as an example 10 by 90 so your failed was 10 and divided by your total execution was 90 into 100 equals 11 percent was your fail rate next is test case block rate so beside your pass rate you know uh, your fail rate this is another measurement uh, and, and it's a happen in a real life there is a block rate like you know the some of the test cases you are not able to execute it for a different reason right so like you didn't have enough data testing data you know as I said so maybe so your environment was not ready you know so many reason uh, or it's there is a, some dependency you know so this test case you can uh, execute it you know because there is a dependency on another test and it's not ready so many reasons so it's uh, help you to measure the percentage of test cases are blocked so formula is total number of test cases blocked divided by total number of test cases executed into 100 example you say your blocked is 5 and you executed 90 uh, so your password would be 5.56 you can do it round figure is 6 percent was your block rate and next is now is product metrics that so the product metrics are used in the process of defect analysis phase of software test life cycle as below so here is a number of you know the metrics are enlisted underneath the product metrics so which is our defect discovery rate defect fix rate defect density rate defect leakage rate let's see one by one what is the defect discovery rate so defect discovery rate it helps to measure the percentage of defect found for any specific release you know or any specific regression you know uh, so f what's the formula formula is total number of defect found by total number of test cases executed into 100 example your total number of defect found 20 your total number of test cases was executed 200 so into 100 so your your defect discovery rate is 10 okay so it is a good comparison you know good uh, good data beside your pass and fail you can see this you know how is your defect discovery rate and next it's your defects fix rate so this is another important you know uh, uh, matrix that helps you to know the quality of the build in terms of defect fixing so you know because assume that you found a lot of bugs and and you file it but if the fixing rate is not good it's not a speed it's not it's not uh, you know uh, uh, as per it's supposed to be you know it's not a fixing rate is not a high then you know you're you will deliver a bad quality of product so you don't want so this will this defect fix rate will give you the answer like what's your fixing rate so your formula would be total number of defect reported as fixed minus total number of defect reopened divided by total number of defect reported as fixed plus total number of new bugs due to fix into 100 so here is a few things you have to you know remember uh, to find your defect uh, fixing rate because you know when you file a defect uh, you know uh, and and they they fix it you know but sometimes you know uh, you have to when you retest you, you probably some of the uh, so, you know fixing was not working and you have to reopen the bug so that's why you have to minus the total number of defect reopen and on the other hand after it's a fixing it can create some new defect it can create some new bug 
so you have to count that measurement too that data too so here example your total number of defect uh, uh, reported as fixed 10 minus your reopen uh, reopen defect 2 and also defect reported as fixed divided by 10 plus it's a new bug found 1 into 100 so it's a round figure is 73 percent is your defect fix rate okay so let's see now defect density so what is defect density it helps to measure the ratio of defect found to requirement as per your requirement against your requirement so this is another good uh, you know the data that's help you to understand your you know your density of a defect so formula total number of defect found by total number of requirements or your total storage into hundreds so since it's a defect always uh, defect found always works against your requirement so that's why it's divided by total number requirement or or nowadays uh, uh, for agile process you can uh, compare to stories so example your defect found 5 divided by your total story is 25 into 100 is 20 percent is your defect density and next is defect leakage this is another very very important uh, matrix it helps you to define the efficiency of the testing process before UAT or UAT you know it's a user acceptance test so a lot of company you know we do a UAT testing before after you finish your re regression before it goes to the production there is a UA in, uh, UAT environment where you know all different stakeholders they participate even your end user uh, can be a uh, participant to do that UAT testing and and uh, you know that time it, this is give you a very significant uh, result that can help you to compare that uh, how your testing process was efficient efficiency you know to measure your, your testing process efficiency if your testing process was good then you are not supposed to get a lot of bug in UAT testing so so here is a formula so total number of defect found in UAT divided by total number of defect found before UAT into 100 an example your total defect found in UAT 10 and before you found uh, at 25 then your percentage of defect leakage is 40 percent so this give you a really significant uh, information that you know how good was your your testing process so you know you have a test cases which is mapped with your all the requirement and you have a pretty much uh, 90 uh, more than 95 percent pass rate which is good but you know, if you defect leakage it shows that it's a you know you found a lot of bugs in UAT testing it means you know your defect leakage percentage is higher so it indicate you even though you cover uh, all the requirement in your test cases but it's still there is a room to improve in your test process maybe you know you need to uh, think outside of the box to add more features maybe there is a features uh, in a specific function or it didn't cover all different features maybe you need to add more negative test cases so that it's cover some breaking point okay so those few things that you have to think twice to improve your to to increase your coverage test coverage uh, as well as to improve your process okay so that th this will really this is very effective uh, uh, information or matrix which is the defect le uh, leakage so that's this two you know uh, matrix this like process matrix and product matrix together you can analyze all the data and find out how process how good your testing process as well as how good your product you know uh, of, uh, which is goes to the testing process too so that's all about that uh, you know the test metrics hope this will help you you know a lot of times they ask uh, it is uh, you know they ask an interview uh, regarding those kind of uh, metrics and also ask you that's how you can define that your process are good or bad so you can easily you know answer through this uh, few of the metrics that you know those metrics will help you to define how good your process testing process as well as how good your product thank you so much that's all for today uh, if you like the tutorial please share with others subscribes and see you next time have a good one bye bye